If I had to give a message to Vol Nation, <laughs> you, Vol Nation, you are one of one, second to none. <laughs> you guys are the craziest group of human beings I've ever been around. I love, I love every second I get to interact with you all. And our football team, our baseball team, just won a national championship. <laughs> our football team is going to win a national championship. Up next. Oh. And Rick Barnes, and Zakai Ziegler, and Jemai Meshach, and company, are going to win a national championship. So I'll see you there. Man, me and San Fran is on the high like it's gold dubs. Your career been going up and down like when shoulders shrug. No plan on using the advice you niggas giving us. If I fall, I'll just run it off like I'm Forrest Gump. Boogie down, I got you niggas shook like I'm B-Love. Fishy places, I don't go in my city like the G-Clubs. Yeah, iPhone is on, but understand it ain't no reaching us. Ran through, but posting on the gram like we all scrubs. I swear it shows, I always smile when I'm pissed off. Wonder where you from, because it ain't matching what you get. So we usually call it the pencil talk pod, but today the hype around, I don't know if there's ever been a hype as big as this dude right here. We've got three different perspectives, the old washed up media head, coach, coach, but with the living legend, the Charleston guy himself, the McDonald All-American, Josiah. I appreciate man. you sitting down this, bro. Appreciate you having me. I'm excited to be here. We've got a lot to talk about. Uh, something like it. Uh, David, Will, I don't really know where to start except for the fact that Kind of like, I guess, ruffling the feathers, going back in through the old yearbook before we jumped on today. Um, we didn't really have to recap it because we lived it alongside right, of it. Right. I'll ask you first, Will. Getting to see this dude from afar. And David, you kind of said, was this maybe the most hype out of a dude in Charleston ever? Gotta be. <laughs> yeah, I'd definitely Gotta give it to him for sure. A lot of guys came out of the city of Charleston with a lot of talent, but all the accolades that he left out of high school with, it's crazy. Crazy work. I appreciate that. <laughs> I appreciate that. I really do. Yeah, it's insane. I was looking back, like, you know, obviously we get the, you know, all right, this is our next guest. You know, I'm doing my little research, you know, and I'm like, hold on now. I keep scrolling back. Hold on now. <laughs> so, yeah, definitely really interested to hear about, you know, how all of this came to be, learn mm -hmm. a little bit more about you as a person. So, excited to get into it. Nice to meet you, my too, man. Though, man the show. I got love for you, too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited. I'm excited. Um, I think we kind of like scale things back. I told you my path with you playing against your brother KJ. Mm -hmm. I had to show flowers too because KJ was the craziest athlete. He was all right. He was all right. He was all right. <laughs> but I just remember playing against him back in 2014 and him going, just wait till what's next. Yeah. Right? I guess my question for you playing at Porter Gal, obviously becoming the mayor of Knoxville, Tennessee. <laughs> right? Literally. That's my city. That's my city. I love Knoxville. But we had to draw you back into Chucktown. Sure. I'm curious, your journey at Porter Gal, not only did it make you the man you are today, but I'm curious, where does it play a critical role in your life to who you are today? Yeah, my time at Porter Gal was remarkable. You know, high school and middle school, when you're in it and you're living it, it doesn't really seem like it's the best. But looking back, you know, I enjoyed every last minute of it. Some days I wish I could go back and, and live it all again. <laughs> but it's been absolutely amazing. The people that I was able to be introduced to, uh, the lifestyle, the grind that I was able being able to be introduced to was amazing. And like you said, it's, it's got me to this point in this position right here, talking to you. Uh, amazing <laughs> men. Uh, yeah. I wouldn't be here without uh, Porter Gout and all it's, it's done for me. I want to touch on Porter Gout a little bit too here. Uh, talk a little bit about Coach JP, man. I mean, obviously he's a living legend in his own yeah. right. You know, would love to hear your take on, you know, first meeting him and just kind of what role he played in your development. Yeah, JP is the goat of all goats when it comes to <laughs> just being a, a bro, a coach, like a father figure. JP is all of the above. He's one of one. Um, like I've known JP since I was in middle school because of my older brother, KJ, who was five years older than me, played for him. And so I would go to watch his practices and JP would, come on, like, you, you gonna be here sooner or later, so might as well come start early. And so JP, instilled a lot of confidence in me from a very early age and obviously getting in the gym with him changed my game uh, instrumentally because he just taught me so many things about the game that at the time I had never thought about. No and like I said, he's just like another father figure to me. I can't tell you how many times I've, I've gone out to dinner with him, lunch with him, and he's just like a big brother and a father all in one. And somebody, you know, I know will be in my corner when the ball stops bouncing. He just wants what's best for me uh, day in and day out. And so I can't tell you how much I appreciate him, but you know, he's done the world for me, and I can't thank him enough. That's dope, man. And so it sounds like he's a player's coach type of guy. Sure. What kind of coach? What kind of coach is he so, like day you know, in, day out, you know? 
it's crazy because I'll go back and watch them practice, and I feel like he's a tougher coach now than he was back in, back then. <laughs> uh, he just says that the talent level has kind of dropped off a little bit. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know, but uh, he's definitely a player's coach. He he's not a a cookie cutter type of coach. Same style oh. offense, same style defense from year to year. He changes with uh, the program and what pieces he has, and he builds around those pieces each and every year. And that's why. You go to Portugal Gym and you see those banners up there. We got a couple of state championships. And like I said, obviously it wouldn't have been possible without having such a, a great guy and a great coach as, as Coach JP. That's crazy. So man. you spoke, I, just to hop off of what you talked about, uh, you spoke on a lot, of, a lot of the talent or the talent level that you had at Portugal. Um, I would like to say it's like one of the richest places. Richest <laughs> one of the richest places. Yeah, uh, the richest uh, programs yeah. in the city yeah. or even the state um, with the amount of talent level mm -hmm. you guys have coming out of there. Um, when you were there, for sure, you had guys like Aaron, uh, Jake Longford, um, and, a, and, a, and a number of other guys mm -hmm. that, that were uh, had successful college careers or even high school careers. Uh, just speak on a, a, a little bit about the rich history or maybe your practices um, at Porter um, when you were there. Well, I can't, I know for a fact I wouldn't be here without the first name you mentioned being Aaron. Right. Like me and Aaron, he was a year older than me. I got there in sixth grade. He was in seventh grade at the time. And when I tell you, we just pushed each other day in and day out. Once we started really trying to take basketball serious, I'm talking, we're in the gym before school, after school, weekends, just in the gym, right. competing, practicing against each other. And I know that I wouldn't be the player, I wouldn't have had the, the high school career without him because you know we're trying to get the best out of each other each and every day. And that's like my big brother. Um, you know I can go to him for anything. But our relationship really started on the basketball court. Like you said, Jake, uh, I think a Jack Nutley, who didn't play college basketball, was a great high school basketball player. Harrison Watley, who went to NYU. Yes. And so we definitely had a squad. I wish. Uh, you know, there's some type of machine where you could just put <laughs> your team, because Travis, Travis and Chris had a good team too, but I just wish there was a way we could play a game with my team against all the other great high school teams from Charleston. <laughs> I know we'd win. I I just, what's win. the number? What's the spread? The spread, it's got to be <laughs> Charleston teams. Yeah. At least, at least 13. Okay. We're going to win by at least 13. Okay. Yeah, it's, 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 it's not close. It's not going to be close. And then we might slack off in the end, give them a little give trash a bucket, something yeah, like that. Yeah. They're going to keep trying, but we know it, the lead's never, <laughs> never in doubt. But yeah, I mean, just the, the people at Portugal, like I said, but Portugal creates such an environment of just excellence, right. starting with the classroom, because you have to be an excellent student before you can even get on the field. And I would say Portugal academics made college academics easy. Yeah. I didn't study very much. In <laughs> I really did it. And I was able to mayor of Knoxville. Yeah, yeah. I, was, I, mayor of Knoxville. I was able to get the grades that I needed to be eligible. But Portugal prepared. I remember I stayed up night after night after night preparing for an exam, test, quiz. And the stress that I went through at Portugal that they purposely put you through is to help you out later in life. And looking back, I can now see that. All right, that's great. So I'll just, another follow-up question off of that. Um, so after looking at all of the great plays that you play with, um, just how does that impact you going forward, mm -hmm. like in your career, making like Gatorade Player of the Year, McDonald's All-American and all of this stuff. Um, like you started off playing with a good bit of great players at Portugal. You got a chance to go play with other great players at camps and all these kind of stuff mm -hmm. that you did. Um, like how, how was that for it you was, as well? It was amazing, you know, for me being 15, 16 years old when it kind of first started happening where I got invited to camps and, and different teams and organizations like yeah. that. And just, it showed me a lot about perspective and areas of my game where I needed to be better. You take bits and pieces from different camps and different players and try to help, because we're all trying to be the best version of ourselves. Yeah. I can't be him, I can't be him, but I can be me. Correct. I can take things from uh, attributes that they both have, the things that they work on a, on a daily basis to try to help better my game and my life. And so that's really what I try to do, just be a sponge. And that really helped me know that, you know, because in Charleston, I was, I was the man. There right, wasn't really, right. we were the team, Port of Gal, um, and so there wasn't really a lot of competition. But once you leave this, the state of South Carolina, there's a lot of good players. Yeah. And I, I, I quickly learned that. And so it just made me stay focused on my goal and the dreams that I had and just wanted to be the best version of myself because, you know, my mom taught me at a very early age that when I put my heart and soul into something that I'm second to no, no person. And, I can live with the results if a win, lose, or draw if I know that I, I gave it everything I had and I worked day, tirelessly day in and day out, then I can live with the results every right. time. 
You bring up a good point, though, and I think it's something that a lot of people are going to watch this and go, hey, I want to walk that life. Right? Like, but it, there's a lot of work behind this. a lot this. of walk. Yeah. Right? Like, he might have been the guy, but they didn't see the early morning workouts and the post-game stuff. They didn't. But having to see, you know, playing with, you know, an Ivy League stud and Aaron Neesmith, who you mentioned, who played in the league, and having mentors like Travis and Chris Middleton, who's in the NBA, obviously, um, what would your advice be to a kid growing up in Charleston that understands that the bubble is small, mm -hmm. right? But they want a dream like Josiah right. James. What would your advice be to them? The work is always going to show, 100% of the time. Um, Kevin Durant has a great quote where it says, hard work beats talent when talent fails to work hard. Luckily, I was given God-given talents, right. but you, you got to work tirelessly, day in and day out. Like you said, the, the early morning workouts before school, the workouts after school, the practices on top of that. You know, you just, you can't be satisfied with the bare minimum. You gotta go above and beyond. And like I said, I gotta give credit to my teammates and the people I grew up yep. with because, you know, you surround yourself by, around successful people, you're more than likely gonna become successful. So if you surround yourself with people who work hard and are, are trying to achieve a goal, you're gonna fall right in line with them. And so, like I said, I wouldn't be here without them, but there's not ever one time where I regretted waking up early or staying late or getting extra shot likes. The work is always going to show that it's undefeated. Whether you're 5'5", five, five, whether you're 7'5", whether you're big and tall, like it does not matter. As long as you work at something, you do something so much, you have no choice but to get better. No choice, no choice at all. No doubt. I've heard a, a, a good quote before too, and it's like, it goes like, you got to work without expecting yeah. anything. So like you're working, without knowing what's gonna come on the end I of it. I just saw that on Instagram. For real? It was a football <laughs> practice, right? Yeah, maybe something like it, that. It was like, you gotta work when you don't know when the destination is. Yeah, something yeah, like that, I exactly. Mean, no, yeah. no, no, that's exactly it. I literally it. just saw that on that's Instagram. That's exactly it, but, yeah, you know, what I, will, <laughs> what I will say is, you know, how, like, how can somebody, so, let's say, like you mentioned, we're talking to, you know, the high school kid that's watching this, mm -hmm. from Charleston, a Hooper, whatever the case is, and, you know, they see other people around them, maybe getting attention. They feel mm -hmm. like they're better. What's, you know what I mean? How do you, how do they deal with, you know, they work hard, but you know, they also see like their peers maybe having more success than them. Like yeah. what can they do to like kind of fix that mindset or like, you know, something like that. Going back to the Instagram thing. I also saw a quote from Steph Curry and I think everybody knows who's, who Steph Curry is. He said the advice that he would have given to his younger self is to not compare himself to other people at the time. Right. And comparison is the thief of joy. Um, like I said, we can only be ourselves. And so that's the only person you should be concerned with. The work that you put in, the mindset that you have each and every day, that's all you should be concerned about. Not worrying about the attention that somebody else gets. They're on the news, they're getting the offers. If you take care of the things daily that you need to do, schoolwork, workouts, sleeping well, eating well and then just making smart choices as a kid because there's a lot of a lot of things in this world today where you could you could fall and make a bad choice but just keeping a good head on your shoulders and not worry about other people is the biggest thing because your time's gonna come um the rain doesn't last forever the sun's gonna come out and you're always gonna get an opportunity so just being prepared when that opportunity arises is the biggest thing no doubt man that's a great point just to kind of finish up on that too like you know, I, like, I feel like basketball is like the most competitive sport to make it professionally in. Like, I, I feel like it's so tough. You know, you always hear stories of like guys in the NBA talking about like, oh yeah, my boy from back home, mm -hmm. you know, could have made it to the league if, you know, if yeah. not this and that, you know. But I was just wondering like from your perspective, like you're there, bro. Like, I, I, I want to know like what differentiates the best you know what i mean like mm -hmm. what differentiates you you're considered one of the best bro like it is what it is what differentiates you from another six seven you know baller who's super athletic and can do the things that you can do like why why do you feel like you're in this position and they're not I'm not right. trying to like take away mm -hmm. from anybody but you know not for sure because like everybody a lot of people who plays the game of basketball want to play in the nba oh yeah but i don't know if this statistic there's like 400 NBA players right now. I right. think there's been less than 5,000 since the league started. So it's a very, very small amount of people. And That's so crazy. just like everybody's gonna work out, everybody's gonna shoot, everybody's gonna lift. Uh, it's about taking care of your body, your, your mental health, your, your school work. It's about everything else kind of outside of basketball that you have to make sure is in check. Because like I said, everybody's gonna do somewhat of the same workout. But it's how are you attacking that workout daily? Are you just going through the motions? Because then 
a quote, a, a quote from my coach in college, Coach Barnes said, if you're not getting better, you're getting worse. Literally. And that's something that, I mean, I kind of <clears throat> live by because you can go and work out for three hours, but if you're not detail oriented, you're not getting the most out of it, then what are you there for? You're not really getting any better. And don't mistake activity for achievement. Get Whoa. Some, yeah, that's a quote from Coach <laughs> that that is a quote from Shout out right. Ricky B. Shout out Ricky B. <laughs> I know back on that. Hold on now. Don't mistake activity for achievement. Just because you're out in the gym shooting shots doesn't mean that you're getting better. Right. It's good that you're out there. It's yeah. great that you're out there. But there needs to be some correlation to your work. You shouldn't, if you're a, a postman, you shouldn't be out there. Right. I, I think everybody should have a chance to dribble the ball, but you need to w work on the things that are going to benefit you right now and in the long run. So I would just say just making sure that your time spent in the gym is as productive as possible. So to sum it up, basically. That. Yeah, it sounds like too, and you know, this is, can correlate into like any aspect in life, but mm -hmm. it sounds like too that you know, you got to have an elite mindset as well if you want to be one of the best, you know what 100%. I mean? 100 percent. And I would say it's also about resiliency because you're always going to everybody in here is going to go through hard times. You're going to have something where you think it's going to go a certain way and it's not going to go that way. How are you going to respond? Yeah. The response is always the biggest thing. You're going to lose basketball games. You're going to have bad games. You're going to have whatever. It's life. You're not going to be perfect. And life isn't always cherries and peaches and cream. Life's, no life's hard. Life sucks sometimes. But it's how you respond to life sucking and how you're able to overcome that. That'll, that'll prevail in the end. That's real. Where are you taking to? It kind of goes back to your bookmark, but your first question as well. Well, I wanted to ask you, especially coaching in the low country, right? right? Two basketball backgrounds, a football and a baseball guy, yet it all revolves around the same theme and the idea that there's a lot of distractions, but Right? And distractions can be a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, for sure. But for when sure. you don't get that spot, right? It feels like living in a social media world that we all are. Right. How have you been able to temper with your guys the idea of being process oriented? Right? Like, it becomes so immediate. I love that. See, we live in a clickbait world, right? I'm trying to get you to watch this right, right. now. I have to grab your attention. Yeah. When in reality, if we live in that, it's not a reality, no, right? Like, how do you get your guys to stay within that process and go, regardless of where I'm going, mm -hmm. this is where we need to live. And I'm curious from the coach's standpoint, or then how you kind of like benefited on it in your way too. Yeah. So like really, like, like you're saying, brought yeah. it to your point, it's a social media world we live in. All the kids are, are uh, inspired or driven by something yeah. on the internet nowadays. Um, and so a lot of times it's just making sure that you are kind of, uh, are in tune with what was going right. on on the social media world of things. One, uh, that you're in tune with your kids uh, and making sure that they understand like, okay, like all of this stuff is going on on the outside world. I got dreams and realities and goals to be the best player that I want right. to be, the best Josiah or the best coach world that I want to mm -hmm. be, you know what I'm saying? And how am I going to like get all these distractions out of my head and yeah. understand that I got to focus on the main goal, um, keep the main thing the main thing. Um, I one of the big thing Coach Q always said when I was at Oceanside, like, just keeping the main thing yeah. the main thing at this time. Like, Literally. all of this other stuff is going on around you. Mm -hmm. You might have hard days going on at home. You might have, um, you know what I'm saying, schoolwork might not be life going on. Be life, 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 you know what I'm saying? I'm going out here to get my books right every day. I'm going out here to, to you know what I'm saying, uh, go put in some work in the gym and not just be in the gym yeah. getting up activity. Yeah. Um, but I'm just trying to figure out a way to make me be the best version of myself. So I wanted to set it up because there's your coach's perspective. <laughs> now, right, you're in the shoes. Yeah. Does Rick Barnes ever have a conversation with you? Because I remember, right, like we're all from Charleston, like getting to watch you on the biggest stages, like take some pride in you, like, oh, look at that, go dominant. <laughs> so when you hear Jay Billis, right, on y'all's SEC championship run, go, this is like their Draymond Green. Like whatever Tennessee needed them to do, yeah. you were able to deliver. Guard the other team's best player, 3 and D, cash up whenever. You go for 20 when you want. But if you were to go 10 and 10 with rebounds and assists, like, it was whatever the laws needed you yeah. to do. And I'm curious, like, is that a conversation with Rick Barnes? Is that your leadership to go, I just won't care about winning? Like, what's that look like for you, you know, coming in as the McDonald yeah. All-American and going, hey, this is where I need to be and who I need to be? Yeah, for me personally, I wouldn't say it was the smoothest or the easiest transition yeah. because you're so used to playing basketball a certain way. Right. But I will also say it was pretty easy because I'm a 
I, I'm a sore loser. I hate losing. <laughs> so if coach tells me I do A, B, C, and it doesn't involve dribbling the basketball, shooting the basketball, yeah. and I know we're going to win if I do A, B, C, I got to do A, B, C. I can't worry about my feelings and how I'm going to look on TV or I'm not getting enough shots. That's like, that's a cancer yeah. in the locker room. You okay. got to be, you have to be, you have to have some type of, com- obviously yeah. you have to have confidence, but you can't be me, me, me. Right. Right. Especially in the game of basketball, yeah. because there's five other, four other people on the, on the court, court with you. you. You can't just be so self-centered. And I think that's where basketball plays, like, I think, you know, sports in general, but specifically basketball, it helps you be able to work with other people. And you can take that into any field, whether you want to be a basketball player or any type of field, anything you want to be great at, you're going to have to deal with people and there's going to be conflict. You're going to have to listen and obey directions. And so basketball just puts all of this in one area and obviously combines it into sport, but it, it teaches you so many valuable life lessons that can, you can carry with you to the day you die. So this is something that we talked about off the camera, right? But just the, the process of Portugal, McDonald's All-American to Tennessee. Um, starting off at Portugal as a point guard, you know what I'm saying, going into the McDonald's All-American where where you're playing against the best players in the country and then going into Tennessee. Um, I felt like all of, like having those moments to make, your, to make yourself a better player, um, like just talk about for a second, mm-hmm. how does that transition go from Portugal to been a McDonald's All-American, then going to Tennessee, and then making it all a smooth transition for you to be who you ended up coming out to be now. Yeah, I would say Porter Gow, like I'll go back to Aaron again. I would say he helped prepare me for it all because we had been battling. We wanted to get the best out of each other since the day we met. And it was a healthy battle. It's not something where, man, I hate Aaron's playing well today. Oh, that's (laughs) making me mad. Like, no, I want to see him win. But he's also, I'm going to prepare him. I'm going to guard him like, He's Michael Jordan, and he's going to guard me like I'm Michael Jordan. And in that process, we were able to get each other better. better. And like I said, I wouldn't have been able to have all the accolades without him. But going to a Team USA camp, I, yeah. I was able to play, uh, do a camp there, and then obviously become McDonald's All-American. Playing with the highest of highest level guys at my age group was probably the best thing that could have ever happened to me. Because it was very humbling, too. <laughs> there were guys where I'm like, like Tyrese Maxey. Mm-hmm from when I was 14, 15, when I first played against him, I was like, this dude's different. He's a problem, bro. Mm-hmm. Look at him now. He's what, making $300 million. Is that a lot of money? Is that a lot of money? But like he, like, and it, it doesn't surprise me that he's yeah. been so successful because at an early age, I'm like, this dude is different. He really just wants to be a great basketball player. Like you said, distractions can yeah. be fun. And yeah. I dabbled and dabbled in a lot of distractions. <laughs> like, Put that on the shirt. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but he was so locked in. And not just him, but he's the first person that comes to mind. Yeah. And then, obviously, getting to Tennessee, that was the biggest uh, humbling experience. I'm, I'm telling you, I was like, I'm walking in. I'm, I'm the big guy of America. I'm the five star guy. Yeah. 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 They go, this is going to be a breeze. I'm going to live and be in college for less than 365 days. I'm going to get in and get out. That was my goal. That was my mindset. And there's nothing wrong with that. But it took me less than a week to realize. The same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on. Hold on. You have to take a step back. Because the team and the players that we had in Knoxville, my big brothers, Lamonte Turner, Jordan Bowden, Jalen Johnson, people who I'm trying to come in yeah. and take their minutes. They're not having nothing. Right. They don't care. Yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. They, don't care yeah. Yeah. they don't care. They don't care nothing about that. Like if, anything, if anything, it made <laughs> my life harder. Because I had two roommates, Ticket and Drew, who had this, uh, it seemed like an easy transition, but I get everybody's best shot because they want to prove something. Nah, coach, he can't just come in here and take my, right. take my spot. Right. And they did it out of love. And obviously they want to win too, but they, I mean, you, t- you take it up to another level, you go to the, the collegiate level, it's, it's kind of like a business. Yeah. It's not as much as a business as the professional level, but it's a business. It's a business. <laughs> business decisions get made. Mm-hmm. Coaches have to win. They're going to put the best players on the court to make them look good and to help them win because winning helps everybody. Right. But I will say that, that going to Knoxville and, and going to Tennessee and playing against the people that I, I did was a, a big learning curve for me, but it, like I said, it all, I'm a firm believer in everything happening for a reason, for sure. and it all happened 
perfectly so just so I can be here and, you know, <laughs> give my testimony and help, help the next generation out. Not for sure. So I just want to kind of follow up off that. You know, you talk about, like, kind of getting humbled at Tennessee and stuff like that in a, in a good way. Mm -hmm. But, you know, obviously, like, five-star, like, McDonald's All-American, like, best thing to come out of Charleston literally mm -hmm. damn near ever. Right. <laughs> How are you able to... You know, you stayed at Tennessee for, what, five years, right? Five years. How are you able to go into that situation, you know, as the man, humble yourself, and not kind of be like that disgruntled dude who's like, I'm going to transfer out, like you right. could have had better opportunity elsewhere. Like what, what made you stick through it, and like what led you to have that kind of humble nature? My mom always told me growing up that if you start something, you should see it through. Ooh. And I tried to apply that to my situation at Tennessee. I had... A lot of expectations coming in, not only from myself, but from the outside world, from the fans. Um, and so I didn't perform the way I wanted to, and so that was tough my freshman year. And there were days where I'm like, this might just be a little too much. Like, I'm not sure if I, I I'm obviously not living up to the hype. I don't know, like, if I, am I doing something wrong? Is this really what I want to do? And obviously, through going back to the social media thing, I'm going on social media, people, yep. you're terrible, you're the worst five star <laughs> I've, I've ever seen, too. you need to transfer, and I'm like, dang, y'all just love me, I got the money two weeks ago, and so dealing with that was tough, but I think, there's a quote from my coach, Coach English, who's at Providence now, um, when I told him, because obviously the coaches, yes. I, he's one of the coaches I was really close with, and I spent a lot of time with him, and he knew what I was going through day in and day out, just being that guy coming right. in. And so he always told me that never let the words of somebody you don't know positively impact you or negatively impact you, whether it's good or bad. Right. You don't know them, they don't know you, so why should, it, why should their words be able to have an effect on 100%. you? And then another quote that he told me, I want to say my sophomore year, that I really truly try to live by is, you're either two things in this world, you're either humble or about to be. Ooh. Because life has a great, like, karma's real. And oh, not yeah. saying that I did anything bad, right. but, like, you can be up one moment, and mm -hmm. then tomorrow yeah. you don't know what the future holds. Right. And so just being a good person and being humble and not being so boisterous about I'm this, I'm that, right. and just being locked in on my craft was the biggest thing. And like I said, it was a learning curve. It was a learning curve having to humble myself. And it's been great for me, but it was tough at first. I don't remember where the question was going. I apologize. <laughs> no, that's perfect. I think you landed the plane, too, especially when you think about I, the Instagram bots are hilarious to me. Yeah. It's like, if you don't have the number, you don't yeah, have yeah. enough to say, and exactly. it's going to hurt my feelings. Those were the same bots that were riding all over. Like we did at the beginning of this thing. The go to ball. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. The exactly. <laughs> The flip up and the switch up is real. I'm telling you, I want to say, like, my, la my freshman year, we weren't great, and then COVID happened. Sophomore year, we weren't great. Lost in the first round of the NCAA tournament. But my last three years, I want to say I lost less than 15 games. Damn. And you would have thought that we were, like, a below 500 team, the way people would talk. And it's, it's always yeah. on the phone. It's yeah. not in person. It's, Charles, it's, it's always low. It's, it's always low. It's, it's, it's never, never in my five years of being at Tennessee, there's never been one bad inter interaction encounter in Oh, it's all love in person. Yeah, in person. Face -face. It's all love. As soon as they get behind the screen, they get yeah. a little courageous. They, <laughs> they're upset. We lost the game. Right. So they feel like they can just call you out of your name. It's, it's the world we live in. Yeah. It's the world we live in. And so learning how to not let those things impact me was big, especially because I know what I went through. I don't want anybody else to go through that. So any person listening, if there's people, there's trolls everywhere in the world. Yeah. There's people who you wouldn't. There's trolls watching. Yeah. Right? <laughs> but, right, that's like a that yeah. but like Jack said, they don't have access to you to sit down and have a face-to-face -face conversation with you or call your phone number. And they're saying something bad about you, just let it roll off. Yeah. It's water off the skin because they don't, they can't judge you by what they see because they don't know you personally. Right. And that's something, yeah. it took me a while to figure oh, out. It's, it's so I much mean, easier said than done. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh, it's so much easier said than done. Because I always want to respond. Every, I always yeah, want to I've learned to play it in a sense. I love it. I love playing the trolls. And it's like, oh, man, that kind of hurt a little bit. <laughs> I will say this, and I was going to wait till the very end to do it. Ted Lasso, we, I know we've been dropping quotes mm -hmm. all over the place. Be curious, not judgmental. The trolls on social media are in it for one and one. <laughs> it's all envy and greed. Like, yeah, I want that. Right? Yeah, like, I want that. Literally. With that being said, 
I've called you the mayor of Knoxville, and I may have pissed off the guy that I have a giant man crush in, Tony Vitello. <laughs> he's, he's definitely the ranks. He's definitely that above guy. The I, I would, he would have my vote. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Yeah. So he would have my vote. I was going to ask you to take the pencil mm -hmm. and give Vols Nation a final message. Because I will say, no one loves you more than I do, Vols Nation. But you are crazy, 100%. which is perfect because I'm crazy too. Do you have a message for Vols Nation? I don't have a final message per se. Because you're coming Yeah, what? I'm I'll a, see you there. I'm, I'm a VFL, baby. Honorary VFL. You are. Look at the hat. Guys. I don't even have the hat. <laughs> Bad Bay Hat Company. The boy wants one. But if I had to give a message to Vol Nation, <laughs> you, Vol Nation, you are one of one. Second to none. <laughs> you guys are the craziest group of human beings I've ever been around. I love, I love every second I get to interact with you all. And our football team, our baseball team, just won a national championship. <laughs> our football team is going to win a national championship. Up next. Oh. And Rick Barnes and Zakai Ziegler and Jemai Meshack and company are going to win a national championship. Oh, so I'll see you there. Oh. I'll definitely see you there. <laughs> Couldn't have said it better without myself. He's that guy. Uh, your Vols Mount Rushmore. I know it's become a little bit of a hype season. Like it, We're going we're gonna to get the Porter Gowd one because we're going to have to ask a question. Everyone Porter always asks Porter, Porter Gowd guys. Easy. Okay. You want to start PG first? Yeah. Okay. Um, just basketball players, right? Uh, I, th I think across the board. Oh, oh, just basketball. oh, oh. I think across From the board. From all time? I think so. Not just basketball? Or just I go basketball? All time. All time. Porter Gowd go all time. Tennessee go basketball. Okay. Porter Gowd, Ovi Mahaley, Brent Demarest. Ovi Mahaley played okay. football. Yeah. Brent Demarest. Just got kind of inducted Wake Forest Hall of Fame. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Um, Chris Middleton. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> Travis Smith. He's actually in the Porter Gowd Hall of Fame, so. Duh. Yeah, black. And obviously Aaron. That's good. Yeah, That's good. obviously, Eric. he'll be in the he'll Check be in the out. in the Hall of Fame. Porter got Hall of Fame. I like it. Balls, sure. you got a balls one. That's tough. Uh, That's tough. I do my all time teammates. If I was yeah, 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 if yeah. I was constructing yeah. a team do it. that had to go undefeated, give me your five. Give me five. Give me five. I'm going point guard, defense player of the year, soon to be SEC player of the year, Zakai Ziegler. Oh. Two guard might shock some some people who aren't really familiar yeah. with Tennessee. Two guard, I'm going Lamonte Turner, one of the best is. Him and Zakai, hand Crazy. in hand, you can defense like second to none. Him and Zakai wish they would have been able to practice against each other. Or like Zakai was my yeah. age and would have got, because Lamonte would have taken it easier on me. <laughs> um, <laughs> but Lamonte, Zakai, Lamonte, Dalton Connect, of course. I mean, okay. that's pretty decent. My, yeah. <laughs> okay. I, might, I might win the national championship with just with those three. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> We're playing at the four. Uh, I'll play at the four, coach. No, no, no. I'm not putting myself in. Absolutely not. Because no. then I just, no, 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 no. Uh, Grant Williams at the four. Big Grant. Two-time SEC player of the year. Damn. Um, and at the five, I'm going to go, you guys probably don't even know him, Wayne, Wayne Chisholm. Yeah, I know the last name. I heard the last name. Big body, yeah. 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 I, I, would bet Anchor. my life salary. Anchor the yeah. defense salary. I bet my life salary. They're going. Up. I don't know if they're going go go undefeated, but they're going to win that they national championship. They win that championship. Yeah, yeah. they're going to win that national championship. I love that. Man. All right, so uh, go off of we talked about a lot about Ball Nation. Mm -hmm. um, craziest place you ever played? Yeah. Like just craziest place, craziest fans. I tell, I to, look forward to telling people this. Yeah. Because <laughs> I love Tennessee and Knoxville and what we have going on. Yeah. But we played at Allen Fieldhouse against Kansas. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And when I tell Rock, you... Chalk, Jayhawk. Hey, and I want to say, at the time, <laughs> it was my freshman year, and it was before COVID, I want to say, going into that game, it was like their 115th straight sellout. It is. And I'll tell you how loud it was. Like, it wasn't even close. Yeah. Like, this is Kansas, and then... Everybody. Yeah, everybody else. <laughs> it was so loud, so we, we break from the huddle, about to go jump the ball. And before we do that, we always, the starting five will say a prayer. Yep. And we huddle up like this. We're literally wrapped around each other. <laughs> and I put my head down, and all I hear is just screaming, just screaming and yelling. The game hasn't even started yet. And all I'm hearing is the screaming. And I'm, I, my eyes are closed, and I look up, and I look at Jordan. He's praying, and his mouth's moving. But you can't hear him. <laughs> I don't hear a word he's saying. I'm like, 
<laughs> and I'm saying, he's literally right here, bro. I can't hear a word. I let see is his mouth moving. All I, amen. And then, <laughs> exactly. that's all I got. That's crazy. We're going to need that. That, that, was crazy. Crazy. that <laughs> place was absolutely insane. And yeah. we ended up losing, but we almost won. Mm-hmm. But by far, Kansas, Allen Fieldhouse, Bill Self has it. Whatever they're doing over there, they're doing something right. So I want to talk a little bit about your recruitment since we're kind of talking about places and, and all that kind of stuff, right? So obviously, like, you had a lot of attention recruiting. What drew you to, to Vol Nation? You know what I mean? Obviously, you got the in-state offers. Right. Break some hearts there. <laughs> you know, tell us. broke some hearts. <laughs> <laughs> I lost a couple of friends. Going <laughs> yeah, I lost a couple of friends. Oh, crazy I tens. Got, so why Tennessee? I love telling this story, too. So Tennessee, I got my first offer from Coach Radenball in sixth grade. I didn't find out about that offer until I was in eighth pause, grade. Pause, pause, time out, time out, time <laughs> you, want, you, want me, you want me to tell you how? Six oh, 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 yeah, yeah, facts. So I'm Emily, he's doing, I, something, he's doing something good over there. They're building. They are. But the Buck Dome. <laughs> oh, yeah. And Knoxville <laughs> look like a different yeah. venue. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, they got an offer in sixth grade. <laughs> I remember because at the time, Coach Radenbar was there, and he... He's known me because we grew. I grew up with his children. KJ played with his his son yep. Reed. He's the same age as him, and so I've known him for a long time. But yeah, he saw me play in a middle school game. He's like, he's a coach where? He was at Charles. 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 Yeah. Charles. 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 Sorry, he's building that thing. Yeah. Let me out. And but hear this. I didn't find out until eighth grade when I got my second offer from Coach Grant at College of Charleston. Because I was like, man, JP, I can't believe it. I got my first offer. Are you happy for me? He's like. <laughs> this your second one. <laughs> so JP, so Coach Raderball so ended up show. telling JP, he's like, yeah, tell him he has a scholarship whenever. If he wants to come to Charleston Southern, he can. Jeez. JP didn't tell me for two years. Two years. <laughs> yeah, he didn't he's tell on me for two I didn't tell you that. Oh, my bad. I'm like, JP, <laughs> like, what? So I got a coach. He could have been classmates. <laughs> That's his fault. That's his fault. Hey, man. But going back to Tennessee, I remember, I remember like it was yesterday. I remember uh, I had a, uh, team camp at Charleston Southern and Jamie Shaw who's like a recruiting guy yep. he was he's big time now but he wasn't as big time back when I was in sixth grade he called coach Schwartz who was ended up being my lead recruiter he's like I want you to give this guy a call I think you I think they'd have some interest in you so I called him when I was in middle school and then I remember they came and watched me play coach Schwartz and coach Barnes when we were in upstate South Carolina and I played terrible Played absolutely awful. I was playing. I was. I was. I was, I was, I was, I was in eighth grade going into ninth grade, but we're playing in seventeen and under division. You always played. Yeah. Always played up. Had to. And so I. Um. I had. Yeah. It was child's play if I played. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was really dropping out of that. I, was for I remember I played awful. I want to say I had like seven turnovers that game. I'm. I'm a point guard. I'm like. Damn, bro. Like. I missed out on that offer. Yeah. And Coach Schwartz called me after the game, and he's like, "Turn around." I uh, have somebody, Coach Barnes wants to talk to you. And so I turn around, I'm in the parking lot, I turn around and then there's Coach Barnes and Coach Schwartz in the car and they, I walked over to the car, they're like, we want to offer you a scholarship. I said, yeah, I was, man, I was geeked up for the whole, man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> get back yeah, yeah, I don't want to play the rest of the time. I don't know, man, what? So they were your first big they offer. Were, they were my first Power 5 offer and my first unofficial visit. You know what's crazy? The day I went to, I think I was in high school, the day I went to go unofficially visit, was sadly the day Pat Summit died. Damn, wow. Ooh. So yeah, but I got to see, cause I didn't really, I wasn't really familiar with her, but her legacy, oh, and man. obviously getting to learn about it, yeah. and not, bro, you would have thought, I mean, it was just crazy. Yeah. It was it was a sad day in Knoxville, that first day I went up there. But like you said, I was recruited at a very high level, very fortunate, very blessed. But with all those offers, you can kind of see, I'll give you a story. <laughs> we, uh, this is once I had, a lot of offers. I had um, a coach from a Power Five school, who I won't name. <laughs> I had, I really had a terrible game. We lost by 60 points to Team CP3. Lost by 60 okay. points. I was, yeah. I was like, bro, I don't want to show face after this. Right. After the game, I called him, and he was like, man, you have no idea how good you can be. I was like, <laughs> you didn't see the game we just played. We just lost by 60 points. He's like, yeah, I see one and done written all over me. <laughs> I'm looking at the phone like, yeah. yeah, yeah can't. Can't. <laughs> so you get to see a lot of BS oh, yeah. in the whole recruiting process. People are going to keep it honest with you. People are going to lie to you. People are going to tell you what you want to hear. And I'm grateful for the people that I had in my corner, my brother, Aaron, Coach JP, my mother and father. Those are the people I leaned on. 
And so when it was time to come make a decision of what schools I wanted to visit and kind of dwindling down the list, Tennessee was, I, my mom literally told me, you have to take a visit there. They've been with nice. you since eighth grade. Like you have to, That's it's just real. common courtesy. That's real. And so I went on the visit. I'm like, I really don't feel like going, but I may as well just have a good time while I'm here. Right. And I got to Knoxville and when I got there, I was greeted by the entire team. Wow. Everybody came to my hotel. Everybody introduced themselves to me and my family. And I just had the absolute best time right. on wow. that visit. Like just being on the campus and getting just a taste of what it would be like if I was a student athlete there was all I needed. I remember, <laughs> I remember on the way back from Knoxville from that official visit, my first one, I was like, JP, we don't need to take any more. Wow. Really? I'm ready to go. Right. But they're like, you can't. You got, you got <laughs> to go on another visit. visit. So right. I went on a couple. I went on a couple more visits. But another thing that stuck out about Tennessee with me, like I said, with, through the BS and stuff, like they would always tell me how good of a player I was, but they would also tell me areas of my game where I needed to be better, or I'd have a not so good game, and we talk about. That's it. what you want to hear. That's what you want to yeah. hear, because like I said, you're not gonna be perfect every day. You want right. people who are going to be invested in you mm -hmm. and not just, oh, you had a bad game now, I got to look elsewhere. They, they were committed to me and helping me. And so I, I want to say at every every game, they had at least one coach there. Wow. At least one coach. And so they just, they made me a priority. And so going into that and then obviously having the visit that I did and just being around the team and the group, it was an easy decision. And I tell people this all the time. like. It would have been interesting to see how like it would have played out if I went to a different college. I remember it was it was down to Clemson, South Carolina. I threw those in there just because, Ball just for the. Yeah. I, was <laughs> I was never, I was never ever going to those two schools. Yeah. Um, it's a little bit more salt. Let's go. A little bit more salt. I did take a visit to Clemson though. I actually did think about going to Clemson. Yeah, no, no, for sure. He was for sure. <laughs> I think I was thinking about going to Clemson for sure. <laughs> Clemson, South Carolina, Michigan State. My dad went to Michigan State. Yeah. Had a good relationship with Tom Mizzle, Duke, and Tennessee. Yeah. And so, like I said, I would, it would have been interesting to see how it would have played out at a, another place. But if I had to go back and do it again, 10 times out of 10, I'm going yeah, to Knoxville. Right. No regrets. Yeah. No regrets. So, a little bit, obviously, talking about your recruitment and stuff. Obviously, recruiting nowadays is yeah. a little bit different. All you right? got to do is get that blank check. Exactly. Yeah, that's that's what whatever company right now. Yeah. So, are you sick that you missed out in the beginning of NIL? And, yeah, you missed out. I can't really be sick because my last two years I was able to make a lot of money. Money. I was able to make money. A lot. In general. In general. It took care of the boy. I do feel bad. For people like older people who weren't able to, because right, right. obviously it should have been a thing the entire time. College athletes make so much money, but I am fortunate and blessed that I was able to at least get something. But it, the numbers I'm seeing nowadays, yeah. are, oh, I'm, no, I'm not touching that. Yeah, I'm not touching that. Stupid. I was able to be compensated though. They took, they well, took care. Of me. Well, y'all, we joke. Statute of limitations is not quite up yet, so we're not incriminating anybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just saying. It was all legal. We all did. Legal. We joked about this off camera. The landscape is the wild west right now. It is. I hand you the keys to the castle, and you get to run college basketball for the 24-25 season. From your perspective, right? We need some like restrictions and guidelines sure. in place, like we talked about. If I hand you the keys of the castle, what would you enforce to clean things up? I guess not to level the playing uh -huh. surface, but to just make it, I guess, a little bit safer for these student athletes. Yeah, because yeah, it's a crazy world we're living in, and you got a lot of people telling you a lot of things, and a lot of times it's not truthful. Yeah. And so people, oh, I'm going to this school. They verbally offered. Right. They say, give me two hundred thousand dollars. Right. Not real. Anything that's yeah. verbal and not written in paper and there's no signature, yeah. run away yeah. because it's not real. They're not I, nine times out of ten they're not going to hold up their end of the bargain. We just saw that this week too. Literally, I mean, yeah, an undefeated team and the quarterback. They're cut. Yeah, crazy. And Man. so that's what I hate about NIL, where it's starting to affect the integrity of the sport. I would personally, to make the playing field even, I would through each conference, I would give each team a salary cap. I like that. You get to pay, you get a, here's a million dollars. You right. pay your 13 players, 13 scholarship players. You can play with walk-ons if you want to, practice players if you want to, but here's a million dollars. You do with it as you will. Yeah. And for a lower conference or a mid-major, make the, the salary cap yep. half a million dollars. And I think that because if it keeps going 
the way it's going, it's literally just going to be the same kids going to the same schools for a lot of money. Yeah. And yeah. it's not fun or fair. No. And like I said, it, it, it takes out the, the fun and the integrity of the sport. And I get, I'm 100, I'm 100% all for NIL, but there 100% has to be restrictions and guidelines and limitations. I don't think it's healthy or beneficial because I know if I was 17 coming out of college, if a, if a school offered me <laughs> the <laughs> amount of money that I'm seeing, I'll take it. Yeah, and of course. it would affect me not only as a basketball player, but as a person, because I'm making this money. This person who's my coach is telling me to do this, that, and yeah. I don't really feel like right. it. Yep. I got this money. Yeah. I really don't need to. I, I got this money from you and the, the say, my college, because my, freshmen, freshmen, all they want to do is come in and play. A yeah. lot of times that doesn't happen. And so say you go to school, get this amount of, this amount of money, you don't play well, you and the coach don't get along, then you're transferring. Yeah. You out of there, yeah. and then you're able to transfer again the next year, and, and again the next year. The transfer is the crazy. Transfer portal, I feel like I love the transfer portal. I think it's great, but the fact that you're able, there should be if you if you transfer, you're not allowed to play the next year. It's so back to the rule. Yeah, my whole, so my whole thing on it though is like it originated because obviously coaches can obviously yeah. do whatever they, they want. Can. Yeah, it is. That's, it really is. The, that's the crazy part. But I feel like the transferring now, like I feel like there has to be something. I'm not trying to sound like that guy, but like. It's, it's guys like freshmen that just get onto campus and then three months yeah. later they're yeah. at another school that yeah. like if they don't like how it's looking like or it's guys that have been to three power five mm -hmm. schools in two years like it's just it yeah. gets crazy and I will say for people who want to play at like the professional level all that goes into play oh yeah you what coach yelled at you or you <laughs> didn't get the right. playing time you wanted they want to know what happened yeah, yeah they, really. they, and then you left you think if you, you're allowed to leave in the, at the professional level, so all that goes into consideration. I've seen guys who are very talented who have been to f five different schools since, like, high school who don't get drafted because you yeah, can't not a good look, yeah, right? It's not a good look at all. And I'm not, I'm not against people transferring. If you're transferring for a good reason, you want to play more, um, you want to trade, go up a level, go down a level. I'm all for that. For sure. But it's the fact that people are allowed to do it so frequently. It needs, so to, be, often. It needs to be a common sense rule. Yeah, literally. Yeah, bro. It's it. Like all there is. Common to sense it. is not that common. <laughs> no, 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 it's not. Nothing. No, no, no. <laughs> like Mama like James said, though, you got to see it through. And I think that's the lesson that's being missed because. Even for right, the five-star McDonald's mm -hmm. All-American, you go to school. It's like these are grown men. Yeah, right? like this is it's man, a different what? sport. Learning to slow it down is the biggest adjustment, regardless of what sport and world we're talking about. So you miss out on that opportunity yeah. to like and see that's the where, other side. And right? that's where like the hard days and the days, the things that I remember the most are the days where I got my, I got it. I'm not gonna say anything bad. Um, <laughs> practice was hard. Yeah, <laughs> practice was hard. And that just made me a better player. I didn't run. Can't. <laughs> there was, there's, since my time in college, <laughs> since the transfer portal, there's three people that I know of off the, through, in the SEC that started at a school and stayed there for five years. Myself, Santiago Vescovi, who was my teammate, and Jalen Williams yep. from Auburn. And that goes such a long way in the world we live in today because there's so many times where we commit to something and it doesn't go our way and we bounce. Yeah. And I'm not saying that's everybody's condition or what happened to everybody, but you have to be committed to something on a good day, a bad day, and when you don't feel like doing it. And those are the, that's, like I said, basketball is just a gateway into life. And the lessons you learn there help you out in life. And so just being able to take the lessons from basketball and apply it to your life, because I can't trust somebody who the going gets tough and right. they're out. Right. They want to. They want to jump. Jump. Shoot. And the thing about it too, bro. And you know, he jokes about you being the mayor of Knoxville, bro. That doesn't happen if you're not there. You don't see right. through the whole time, bro. Like God, you know, obviously God willing, everything works out in your career and everything mm -hmm. goes away. You know, your destiny is supposed to go. But if something happened, you were got down back. bad. No, you never have to ask for anything. They got my back. You know what I mean? The mayor. <laughs> I like that. There. I like you that like, tag. Yeah. I did it. Wait, what? There's got to be a shirt out there. You know, I can't give you credit. Like someone's down already. Yeah. Uh, I, I, there's no shirt. There's no shirt. But I will say, I coined the school the the phrase everything school, and they're running with it. And look, you look, look, at, look at what's happened since. You know he got a cut. <laughs> Come on. No, a cut. no, but I'll tell you this. You go left for the Bama game, Vols Nation. He's can't coming. Wait. Pencil Talk will sponsor some Mary shirts, and we'll Perfect. just merch this sell out of hell out of Easy it. Easy money. Uh -huh. I do have to ask this basketball guy. 
He's wearing the Jordan shirt. Yeah. No, don't, 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 don't. No, no, no. No, 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 no. no. Not your goat? Great player. Outstanding player. LeBron, <laughs> LeBron. He's not LeBron James. LeBron James. LeBron James. He's not LeBron James. He's not LeBron When we're specifically <laughs> talking about the greatest <laughs> basketball <laughs> players. Not a question. You can't go against LeBron James. Yeah. When you're talking Kobe Bryant, I think you can go against LeBron. Wait, I'm no. a Kobe fan. Oh, oh I, 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 I don't like Kobe. You're not even picking the second no, one. No, I'm not. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I, Kobe is my good. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. I don't agree. We'll really agree. Right, right, right. Right. <laughs> I do. We I haven't picked that one apart. But <laughs> I, 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 I don't even need you. It's one of the one big. We don't even need the conversation. So here we go. So now that we got Aaron and Josiah, kind of mesh back together uh, for the first time since high school, right? Mm -hmm. um, how has that been? First off season together, yeah. um, getting to train a lot uh, with Devon yeah. and making sure like, you know, you guys are good to go before you head out for your first season. How, how, how has life been, That's been as, a, as, a, as a now pro mm -hmm. uh, after your college career has been over? It's been outstanding. The best part is no school. <laughs> no school is usually the best part. Part time. Man, what? I put in pain for this. <laughs> but uh, the, I feel like the biggest transition I've had is just adjust, adjusting to all the free time that I've had. Yep. And because, like, school and practice would take up eight hours of my day, seven hours of my day daily. And so I have all this time to myself where it's like, man, what am I going to do? So it's, it's at first it was tough to just stay on task mm -hmm. all the time and because it's like I have so much free time I can yeah. go work out whenever but it's good to have a schedule and like you said working out with Davon and Aaron we up 5 30 in the morning that that alarm clock's going off because <laughs> we got to go in there and practice before Porter Gowd school starts and then we go lift after that but being in the gym with Aaron has been awesome he's he's helped me a lot obviously Aaron is an outstanding basketball player specifically just like a great shooter and a great defender so just picking his brains on his brain on, on those aspects of the of the game and obviously college and NBA is it's the same sport but it's a different, different game speed. yeah it's a different game so just trying to know as much as I can before I get thrown into it yeah. uh it's been a, it's been a lot it, it's been a lot of good help coming from Aaron and then just being in the gym with him playing one-on-one -on -one with him it's helped me out a lot it's been very humbling it's also been very very good for me because it's like man I yeah, I just beat Aaron. Like, Aaron, yeah. Aaron's guarding Jalen Brunson, <laughs> Jalen Brown, Jason Taylor. If I could score on Aaron, I could score. There's not many people who can yeah, stop me. Give me a little bit more confidence. Exactly. Than I My confidence level has definitely gone up. And then, like I said, experience and reps is the best thing. And so just being in the gym and being able to, to pick his brain. And also, Chris was here for his camps yep. for about two weeks. He was in the gym, him and KJ Manigault, just mentoring us and just putting their knowledge and their wisdom into us and pouring into us has been amazing. And I was like, the people in Charleston, like there's, that's why I'm so grateful to be from here because it's never a competition. Right. Like we all want to see it's each other. Love. Yeah, it's all love. And of course we compete on the floor, yeah. but he wants to meet, he wants to see me succeed as much as I want to see him succeed. And when you live life like that and you have people like that in your corner, it's easy to, to become the best version of yourself. So. So, so to the people who are watching that maybe not know your game mm -hmm. or maybe not know who Josiah is, Jordan James is as a basketball player, kind of give them a description of your game and kind of what you've been working on going into um, your first year as a pro. Simply put, I'll say I'm a winner. Right. I win. I've, I try to. I want to win. I want to win at the highest level and whatever it takes for me to be able to win, I'm going to do that. Whether it's guarding the best player, I pride myself on my defense first okay. and foremost. And I give a lot of credit to Coach Barnes for that because I remember back, going back to my recruiting, he's like, you're not a very good defender. <laughs> like, we, need to, we need to help you out on that end of the floor. And my five years there, I've been able to go from not being a not really good defender to one of the better ones uh, in the SEC. And so I give a lot of credit to him for that. Um, my three-point shooting is something I hang my hat on, my, mm -hmm. my ability to, to knock down an open shot. But also just my, my IQ because, like you said, I was a point guard coming out. And it's not like, so you stop playing point guard, you, you forget how to pass the ball and how to dribble. You don't, it's not how it works. It's just the role that I was asked to play for at Tennessee. So the skill set that I had before college, the, the point guard skill set, set that I had, the IQ skill set that I had is still with me. Yeah. And so just being able to implement that at the professional level, mm -hmm. I think would be good. And I honestly, from going to summer league and going through summer practices, 
I want to say easily that college basketball is a lot harder than, yeah. <laughs> than <laughs> professional basketball just because, well, NBA basketball, I'll say, because the court's so much wider, mm. you can't sit in the paint. There's a defense of three, three seconds. seconds yeah. um, and then just the level of play, like, it's, it's high level. 24-second yeah. shot, shot clock, so you're getting up and down. you got to be in great shape. But like I said, simply put, I would I would just categorize myself as a winner. A winner. That's great shit. I love that. Dude, I always get crazy, like, yelled at when I say that. It feels like better basketball. Like, I understand the talent is head and shoulders yeah. better, but you said it and you opened the door. Yeah. It's better basketball. It's really like, 100%. I was with my yeah. friend, Joseph, the other day, and we were watching high school mixtapes. These kids are doing things. Better never I, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad I'm not. Yep. I'm not. Yeah. 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 They're doing things that is just nasty to see. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, they're doing things professional athletes can't do. Yeah. And, the, the, like, and obviously, that's how the world works. People get better yeah. and better over time. But the competition level is absolutely insane. Yeah. And that's why LeBron's the GOAT. Like, yeah. he's the best player and okay. the best, like, this is the best basketball I've ever played. 21 years. Michael Jordan played against oh. Hummers <laughs> and Firefighters. <laughs> I love Hummers and Firefighters, but I'm not yeah, going to pick them to be on the Olympic team. <laughs> hey, remember how we talked about those trolls on Instagram? <laughs> I, I was, we were wrong. Like, they're coming. They're coming. Yeah, he's wrong. Yeah, I feel like he's wrong. I feel like he's wrong. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's pretty <laughs> trash. The game is the win, though. Yeah, fact. Okay, so. We're going to talk right. about this. <laughs> We're going to talk about this. <laughs> that's, a, that's a that's a six point yeah. document yeah. actually yeah. podcast series that we, we don't have enough time for. That. <laughs> we don't have enough time for that. I do like to ask though because I believe it was the guy Scotty Eisberg that has asked every time someone has come back to town, King of the Court, mm-hmm. you, Aaron, Chris, because I said we saw it in high school and in middle uh-huh. school when you did it. Who you like? You like your odds? I'm not going to lie. So Chris was hurt. He was nursing. He he ankle. had surgery yeah. Yeah. on his ankle, so he wasn't playing. But Aaron and I played for like two weeks straight, and I don't know. He whoever is up is up by like one game. I like that. Is up because there's days yeah. where I mean I was four zip to him, yeah. Yeah. and there was days where he is like six to one me. Yeah. Yeah. And it doesn't matter. Yeah. So <laughs> it's like I mean. Obviously, I'm gonna take myself, <laughs> but it's gonna be it's gonna be good bump regardless. It's gonna be, that. and we're gonna get the best out of each other. So obviously, man, like pro hoops. Obviously, now it's your time. Like out of college, a lot of exciting stuff coming up. I guess, what are you uh, looking forward to the most uh, in NBA basketball? Hmm. Honestly, just playing basketball. <laughs> How about this? I'm a real hooper. How about the guy? Is it? Would there be a guy that would be like? I mean, we. I know we joke yeah. about the king, but would there be a dream guy to be like? Oh, I got the. I got this kind of. I get to match up with this guy. And I'm be so LeBron. yo. I'm so of envious of Dalton, my teammate, who got drafted got to drafted the Lakers. Lakers. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. I'm like. Let me see his locker. Yeah. Bro. <laughs> oh my god. And I tell him this all the time, but yeah, LeBron James for sure. But stepping on the court with Aaron and Chris okay. would yeah. That's yeah. legendary. Monumental, that's legendary. Yeah. Monumental stuff right there. I, 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 you think about like some of the prep schools, whether it be like a Chino Hills yeah. or like an IMG, but when you think about like, oh, yeah. 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 That's what I said. Rich, rich, that's rich, yeah. rich, rich, yeah. rich, 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 rich. <laughs> uh, how about a guy that maybe when you're going home to do film study, I always love asking like mm-hmm. the comp question. Is there a guy that you like to watch to go, hey, I see a little bit of myself in yeah. there and yeah. try to borrow from? <laughs> you know, it's crazy. Throughout like the, the pre-draft process, um, I watched a lot of film. And I was able to go to a lot of, I, I did 11, four, I think like 14 workouts with That's NBA teams. Wow. And so you always sit down and they'll ask you about yourself. Who's your NBA comp? Who do you watch film of? <laughs> and <laughs> the truth is, it's Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> the truth is, it's Aaron. I'm like, bro, I, like, I, tell, I tell him that. I'm like, bro, I don't mean any disrespect, but I think I can do what you do. <laughs> <laughs> That's what <it> is. <laughs> Uh, you get a very high level, a very high level. And you get paid a lot of money, and you're great. But I think I can I do it. <laughs> so that's why, I like, when I'm I get too far. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's what I like. Get in the gym with him. I just like, cause Aaron will guard the best teams, yeah. the team's best player. Yeah. He is a knockdown shooter. Yeah. He's it, there's no flaw in his game. Yeah. And what he's asked to do, he he thrives in it, cause he's not asked to do too much. And if he was, I think he would. He still dropped 30. Sure, yeah. I think he's still, still yeah, yeah, yeah. If Aaron was able to, yeah. 
But that's what I think. That's where, like, when we, I joke about, like, the collegiate level versus the pro game where it's just a bunch of talent they're still cultivating versus what you just did for five, six years. Like, mm -hmm. your game matures and gets better because you've been doing it at such a high level. And it just, to me, it translates. So that's where, like, us, we get excited as hell because, like, just give them. Give man, a shot. Man, just watch. That's all I need. That's watch. all I and every every interview I did and I was just like, if you just I just need an opportunity. I'm not I, I don't need all thirty teams to like me. I just need one opportunity. Yep. And thankfully I was able to get an opportunity with Indiana and I'm going in. They know that, you know, I'm gonna come in and, and do what I do. I'm gonna be me, I'm gonna work hard and I'm gonna be a winner yep. at the end of the day. And hopefully we can win at the highest level possible. Love that man. That's awesome, man. Best of wishes to you in the future, brother. It's great meeting you, man. Yes, sir. I'm excited, man. My guys. A blast, man. All love, big guys. Yes, sir. I appreciate y'all. Yeah, for real. Ball, Ball Nation, we out. Ah, <laughs> ah, ah. Uh, do you still hear Rocky top in your sleep? I was playing college football before I came here. <laughs> <laughs> what team do you think I play with? <laughs> Rocky is high. Man. Me and San Fran is on the high like it's gold doves. Your career been going up and down like when shoulder shrug. No plan on using the...